how we want to take this forward. So can I open it up to the, the floor and see? Don't forget your mic. Sorry. Yeah, there was Councillor Cherie people, mm -hmm. Paul Brindley and myself on the Young People's Working Group and we presented two reports over the year um, and that's where it was left at the end of the last council. So it's okay. what you want to carry forward now. Okay. Councillor People, do you want to speak on that? Thank you, Chair. I'd almost forgotten how to use these. <laughs> um, <laughs> It is very strange to be here in it person. Is. Yes, um, I think it's probably something that we might want to think about going forward. Um, the remit of the working group changed a little bit as we went along because we initially wanted to look at attainment amongst young people in Tamworth. Um, but we realised when we started um, the process that there were a lot of effects of the COVID situation, particularly on young people's mental health. Um, and I think that's really where we ended up. Um, and I don't know whether the committee wants to carry that forward as an item to keep under review um, or whether it needs to be a separate work stream or, or what people want to do. Because obviously the, the makeup of this committee has changed fairly substantially from last year. So people might have different views on how to take things forward. But I think it is an area that we certainly should have uh, some regard to um, what we found, uh, Moira did some work, I did some research, uh, was that there is there are significant impacts on young people from the COVID situation and that's not going to get any better. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor People. Well, should we move on to and leave that sort of on the shelf until we get to the work plan and have a look at it then. Councillor Grouchy. Yes, I mean, if that's what you want, Chairman, then mm -hmm. that's what we'll do. Okay. I think the thing about the mental health with, ch with school children, I think now it's become a sort of a national issue. You know, it's been highlighted in the press quite a lot and, and we'll be able to learn from that as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. I don't have anything else to report as an update. Um, responses to put reports of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny t Committee, well, there are none to report. Move on to item six. Consideration of matters referred to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee for, from Cabinet or Council. So th there are none apart from the agenda item nine, which is the state of Tamworth debate item. So we'll move on again. We're going through this quite quick. Update on health related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. Uh, there are two digests from Staffordshire County Council updating the committee on the county level meetings on the 16th of March and the 7th of June. I believe those have been circulated. Um, as chair, I'm a member on the County Health and Care Overview Scrutiny Committee. It keeps changing its name, doesn't it? Um, 70,000 first doses and 40,000 second doses. Um, all care home residents have been offered the first dose and they'd had a 94% take-up rate. So again, really good. Um, it was now being offered to homeless people after a rollout in Stoke City. Um, and there were pop-up clinics um, aimed at the... Uh, BAME. black and minority ethnic communities to try and improve um, take up there because that's a bit lower than normal. Uh, and I think there was, like you mentioned, there was an update last week. Um, 
Second one was around an integrated care system update. So there was a report regarding proposals for uh, an integrated care system for the whole county, which was the merge of six CCGs together. Um, and all 147 practices have voted in favour of that. So that's proceeding. And then the last one was around care homes. So prior to the pandemic, um, the county had been looking at supply and need for care homes in the future. Um, and that was now outdated because of the pandemic. So it's been looked at again because um, there's a continued need for extra uh, infection control measures. So that changes the need slightly. So it's, it's basically being re-looked at uh, again. That's just a bit of a bit of a summary. Um, I'm new to that committee as well. Um, and uh, as we get through the year and I get up to speed with that, um, I'll bring that info here and I'll be here each meeting for this as well. Thank you. And if there's anything you want updating on, by all means, email me. Or if the updates I give here aren't quite what you want, then, then let me know. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, do any councillors have any questions? Councillor People. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it, with regard to the integration of health and care, um, it's something that's quite dear to my heart. <laughs> uh, I've previously worked as a solicitor in the health sector, and um, one of the biggest frustrations was the constant fight between health and care and who's going to pay for it, and that's still going on. I'm currently supporting uh, one of our former homeless clients who needs help with medication. So he has carers who go in three times a day to give him medicine, and that's free on the NHS. But if we want those carers, who are going anyway, to make him a cup of tea at the same time, then that becomes care and he has to pay for it. Which is a nonsense, really. Um, we've, we've seen over, I don't know, 20 years or so, the constant fight that there is between health and care, who's paying for what. Um, so what my question is, is will this integration actually make a difference or is it just window dressing? And you, you may not be able to answer that yet because obviously, as, as we've all said, you're new to, to that committee and to this committee. But be, uh, if you can help on that, it would be really interesting to know. Yes, you're right. So I don't, I don't know the exact answer now, but that would certainly, um, you know, be an objective of it. Um, not as a solicitor, but I, I've been involved in some healthcare stuff before. And when people are discharged from hospital, often what holds it up is working out the care and who's going to pay for what when they leave. So it absolutely should be a, a aim of it. Yeah. Chair, could I just say um, thank you for that and. I hope uh, on behalf of this committee that you can bring your influence to bear at county to make sure that, um, that that's what happens, that we do get proper integration and stop the squabbling about who pays for what and let's just sort it out. Thank you. Agreed, yeah. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything to, to comment on? Councillor Grouchett. Could I just ask, you mentioned homeless people. Is it Are they able just to walk in or do they have to make appointments? Because it might be quite difficult for somebody who's homeless. Uh, I mean, we've all got computers and phones and things. And then they might find it quite difficult to make appointments. So is it just a walk-in service? So I, I don't know the answer, to be honest. I know, I know that in the country now you can just walk in, but you normally need to provide some details to bring up your NHS number. So I'm not sure for a homeless person, but I know you can just walk in now. You you mentioned that this was something that was brought out in the last um, healthy, the, the county council health committee. Um, and it was started, did you say in Stoke? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, started in Stoke. So do you know how that process works in Stoke? No, so I've only yeah. seen the high level sort yeah. of summary of this was rolled out initially in Stoke on Trent City area and it's now being rolled out elsewhere, but not not the detail of how it was rolled out. Okay. Maybe that's something that we could have some feedback on at the next Yeah, next happily meeting. take it away, yeah. That'd be great, thank you. 
Yeah, sorry, Chair. Just just for information and without wanting to hog the meeting, um, you'll probably be aware that one of the projects that this council is doing is working with my charity, Heart of Tamworth, to provide support for people coming out of street homelessness. And one of the things that we're doing is working one to one with those people to try to ensure that their health care is properly provided for. Um, so, for example, our worker is doing things, really simple things like helping people to find their NHS number because often without your NHS number, it's really difficult to access services. Um, and I think that's actually a really good model. So um, it might be something that it would be useful for this committee to know a bit more about. Um, it's only obviously affecting a very, very small percentage of the population, literally street homeless people. Um, but I think it's been a very good initiative, which has been a brainchild of of the Borough Council. Um, so it might be something that we'd want to, to look at a bit further sometime uh, in this committee. Thank you for that, Councillor People. I, I, I wasn't aware of that, so I presume that's been headed up by partnerships? Uh, it is actually an, an initiative that's being headed up by Housing Solutions. Right, okay. um, and as I say, it's, it's really uh, it, it arose out of the fact that the winter night shelter had to close at the start of the pandemic and that, as you'll know, uh, which was backed up by the government's Everyone In programme, meant that anybody who was street homeless was housed in either bed and breakfast or some sort of temporary accommodation. Um, but the real issue I think for a lot of homeless people and apologies for as I say for hogging the meeting everybody but it, it is quite an important area um, I think the real issue for a lot of homeless people is that they have a lot of multiple um, issues for want of a better word of, obviously things like mental health sometimes substance abuse history alcohol abuse history um, domestic violence domestic abuse all sorts of, of issues um, which mean that a lot of people who get taken off the streets, end up back on the streets. And so the whole purpose of this particular initiative is to try to break that cycle and to make sure that somebody who is um, taken, who was taken off the streets because of everyone in, doesn't go back to the streets once everyone in finishes. So yeah, it is, it is a really, as I say, only affecting a very small number of people, but it is quite an important initiative uh, in that it's something that's innovative and um, I think has been a success so far, touching a lot of wood. Thank you for that, Councillor People. Anybody else got any? Yeah. Councillor May. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just looking at the County Council's work programme, uh, which was mentioned, well, which was discussed at their meeting uh, on the 7th, Going on later into our meeting, where we're going to discuss our works plan, that the scene, there looks like there's going to be a few crossovers, um, especially within their next meeting, where they will speak about GP services. Um, I was just wondering, uh, Councillor Jay, if you could really focus in on that part of their meeting, so on the next our meeting, we can we can scope that and see how we can we're not crossing over with the county, not uh, doubling efforts. Thank you. Councillor Chair? Yeah, well, you, you'll have a, a double time of tag team of, of well, is it, other than is Rosie or yourself who's attending and, and me as well, right? So we'll, uh, we'll cover that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting point anyway, um, because for me, it seems like there, there are two levels um, and obviously Staffordshire County Council are overarching all the health and wellbeing initiatives and issues that we have um, and I think we need as a committee my view is that we need to focus on what we can do that is specific to Tamworth and as councillor people said if, the, if this initiative is specific to Tamworth that could be something we could look at but lots of other issues that we can look at but specifically for Tamworth so that we don't end up duplicating or stepping on each other's toes so to speak has anybody else got anything they want to no 
Right, I'll move on to the next item now, which is the forward plan. Um, we've got a couple of items that we've flagged up here for um, one consideration to, for Cabinet on the 29th of July, which is leisure services, which I think fits in quite nicely with with health and wellbeing because of the well-being the well-being aspect of it. Um, Councillor Maycock, did you want to speak on that? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, just looking on the forward plan, there isn't actually a report there as such yet, so it would be really interesting to get the officer in that's going to be involved with that report to discuss what um, impacts and provisions there are for the the access of leisure services which will ob obviously be a positive impact on people's health and well-being uh, which has been evidenced by a number of reports thank you thank you councillor makeoff yeah i did, i think that i mean that one is one that i think we could focus on specifically for tamworth um has anybody else got anything they want to say on that particular one leisure services um, and then we go on to homelessness and allocations. Um, policy update due for cabinet consideration on the 8th of July. So that is before our next meeting, I believe, Jo? Yes, Chair, that is before the next meeting. So if we can move on to that one. Um, I think there are a few other things on the, the forward plan that we need to look at as well. Um, Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan, sections relating to mental health. I don't know if people have had the opportunity to actually look at that. Um, I'll open that up to discussion. Thank you, Chair. Um, just briefly reading through the report, there is a one section that's going to involve our committee, um, but the majority of the report obviously falls under ISAG, um, and that is around the safeguarding um, to deal with issues of mental health, uh, alcoholism and drug use, um, obviously falling under our scope, uh, so my suggestion would be to tie in with the chair of the ISAG committee uh, to maybe join up with just that specific issue which is at the end of the report. Thank you Chair. Thank you Councillor Magus. Yeah, I think that's a, a good suggestion and I'll speak to um, the chair of ISAG as soon as I get an opportunity to, to discuss that with, um, with him going forward. Is there anything else anybody wants to raise on the forward plan? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, just one more. Uh, looking at the Tamworth Community Grants, uh, I'd just be interested to see what incentives or priorities are given to community groups that have a health and wellbeing theme. Uh, for example, um, peer-led support groups for mental health, if, if they're getting any, any funding at all, uh, I just think that that would benefit them groups. Thank you. Okay, that's certainly something we can discuss when we get to the um, to our actual work plan, isn't it? So nobody else has got anything to move on from that? So now we move on to consideration of the state of Tamworth debate, which was in March last year. Uh, following the debate, the leader thanked officers for helping compiling, compiling the report and specifically asked that um, they, the points be referred to scrutiny for consideration for work plans during forward and shared with all members. So I'm just opening this up to discussion really. <coughs> Um, there are a few things on there that I think we could pick up on. Green and open spaces, partnerships with the voluntary sector and learning lessons from the pandemic. So I'll open that up to discussion. Is 
Sorry, Councillor Pupil. You can call me what you like, providing you don't call me late for my dinner, as my dad always used to say. <laughs> and Cherie is fine. Um, yeah, one of the things that was brought up in the State of Tamworth debate was um, a, a educational attainment, which is, as I said previously, where we started from when we were talking about um, um, the Young People's Working Group. And I think there was actually one of the councillors at the State of Tamworth debate who said that there was no problem and we had one of the best educated and best trained workforces in the country. Um, but I think that councillor was probably in a minority of one because the, the statistics actually don't bear that out. Um, we actually have a real issue with attainment um, and if you look at the attainment of some of our um, secondary schools, they're actually amongst the lowest in the county um, and certainly below the national average. So I think that is something that we do need to keep coming back to. It's going to be really critical coming out of the pandemic to make sure that we have um, young people who are as well educated and well trained as possible. Um, and that's something it's it's been an issue in Tamworth for as long as I can remember. Um, and I can remember I wasn't on the council at the time, but probably uh, 10, 15 years ago, councillors were raising these issues. So I think that is something that we really do need to come back to. And you might argue it's not specifically a health issue, but it's certainly a well-being issue if um, we have people who are not achieving their potential because they're not getting the support in terms of education and training that they need. So I'd be very keen for that to be something that we, that we come back to at some point. I think it's probably um, appropriate for this committee rather than any other, but uh, be guided by what other members think. Thank you, Councillor People. Can yeah, regarding what uh, Councillor People or Mayor Cauley Cherie has just said, I don't know if anybody's read it in the paper today um, that there's a report that young, poor white boys are suffering very much. I don't know if we've got any um, evidence of that in Tamworth. Uh, in in our secondary school or well, maybe in all the schools i don't know but this it will it did worry me a bit when i read about this this morning are you aware of that problem in tamworth or you know could we find out if there is a problem with young poor white boys specifically that's not something that i'm aware of i did, did hear it on the news i have to say um i know for some time i was on the health and well-being committee a couple of years ago and there's always been a rolling um, item on the work plan for a head teacher to come in and I don't think that's ever happened you're shaking your head I don't, I don't think so. no I don't think that's ever happened is that still on our work plan it is still on the work plan it councillor Ford did try to um, engage with a, um, a head teacher and invite them in and we nearly got there um, towards the end of the last municipal year. But to be fair, with with COVID and the schools closed, it proved very difficult. And with our remote meetings, it, it proved very difficult. So um, it does remain on the agenda and, and that that could be something to to keep on and to think how we want to structure and how the fo what the focus is to ensure that, you know, it delivers the sort of outcomes and, and, and the information that we need and, and the preparation we need to do for it. So it is there still, Chair. Yes. Thank you. My, my worry with just getting one head teacher in is that you will just get one head teacher's view. Um, and I'll be guided by the committee as to who, who you think might be best to get in to, to discuss this and to give us the information. Oh, right, OK. Um, Councillor Pupil. The responsibility for education lies with the county council. Yes. And when I was a county councillor, it was something I raised on a number of occasions. And I usually got a pushback along the lines of, oh, well, of course, there are academies now, so it's very difficult for us to do anything. Personally, I don't accept that. 
Um, so I think that if we're going to ask questions of anybody, it should be of the relevant um, person, persons at county who are actually responsible for education. Thank you for that, Council of People. Council of Grade Checks, do you have something to say? No, Sorry. No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Oh, sorry, Councillor Michael. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I heard the, the news this morning and it was uh, around working class uh, families um, that they their exam results have been dropping off um, and the government is going to be looking into that. Um, but going back to a more specific Tamworth orientated view of it, um, Councillor Popel, I know you're speaking about the the attainment uh, and that was tied in with your work plan uh, well, sorry the working group um, I was just wondering if that does continue uh, that could be something that could be looked into a lot deeper on a Tamworth level and tying in with the head teachers if the work group could send out a possible email to all head teachers for their input of what they are doing for their schools for attainment then that's us looking at our level not having to go up to county thank you thank you councillor maycock yeah that, that that i think that's a good suggestion actually is that something that we could perhaps get on to when we get to the work plan because we haven't made it i think we're going to have to try and look at priorities here because there's, there's such a, a wide amount of issues that we could look at that I think we're going to have to um, get on to that debate. Um, which is next, if anybody else hasn't got anything to say on the Tamworth debate. Right, so we're moving on to our work plan now then. Which um, had we concluded um, anything with regard to the state of Tamworth? Because there were a number of of items there that were relevant to us. I mean, certainly things like, I'm just whizzing through the, the, the summary document, but um, certainly the green spaces issue. Um, I think one area that I think might have impact on health is, is ways of working, because people have been forced to work at home very often during the pandemic. And for some that has been, you know, marvellous and very liberating and, it, and it's given them a, almost a new lease of life. But um, I think there are a number of businesses that are saying, well, let's carry on with this because there's potential cost savings and so on. Uh, but I think there might be a longer term impact and that might be something that we want to, to think about because um, people being generally sociable creatures um, sometimes don't, don't take well to being on their own at home. And there's all sorts of other pressures when you're at home. Um, so that's what that's one thing. Um, there's also the um, points that we made earlier about homelessness, and I think that's another um, area we've already talked about attainment. But are we actually going to add these into the work plan? Is that the the aim of the discussion? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> the aim of the discussion is to um, integrate some of these. Well, I've got about 10 items down here at the moment, and I, I think we have to be realistic. We can't look at everything. Um, and a, a lot of what, what I feel is coming out of this is that overarching a lot of it is the mental health issues with all types of things. Um, the young people, the mental health issues, we've got that. And that seems to be the common thread, really. Um, yeah, th I, thanks for that, Chair. I was just a little concerned that we were sort of leaving the discussion somewhat in the air, but if the aim is to yes. then feed it into the work plan, then yeah, yes, I'm yes. with that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Um, right, so we're, we're moving on to the work plan now. Um, I don't know if Councillor Maycock wants to in on the Midland Partnership Foundation Trust that we've been we've been having some discussions about, which I think might be useful for the committee because it does 
encompass a lot of the mental health issues that we've, we've been bringing up at, with all these other items. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so the Midland Partnership Foundation Trust, uh, the MPFT, uh, are conducting a review of the mental health services that uh, f for the community. And they're asking service users and people that are going to be involved in the mental health of service users um, and basically that they're, they're conducting the review to implement uh, ch changes basically and we're being asked as a committee to have representation on that uh, and obviously with all the issues that have been highlighted such as the green space uh, the homelessness uh, a bit like a bit later on it's going to be older residents and isolation and all of these recommendations that we could put in to this body would only be of benefit and our representation there by somebody from this committee would be positive thank you councillor michael yeah it, it's it's something that was um i think it was sent out to me actually from the mf MFTP, MFTP, um, the Midlands Partnership, um, and yeah, they are looking for members of this committee and people that use the services so that they actually get a proper picture of what's going on. I don't know what whether the age group would fit in with the young people's mental health issues. That's something that we'd have to find out. So. Shall we just work through the plan as we've got it at the moment and see what we've got? So the plan at the moment, we've got, um, we've got councillor, county council matters for every meeting, for each meeting. Then we go on to Together We're Better brief update post and that's ongoing um, I don't know if any if Joe can fill me in on that one um, that has been on the work plan and it might well need a refresh in in its direction because and I'm not sure it's still the correct terminology to use for our for our work plan so if I could take that away it has just stayed there and from some considerable time ago. So if I can look at where that that was, the consultation had to stop um, towards the end of, I think it was 2019, and I'm not sure with COVID in March 2020, whether it really got started again, mm -hmm. um, or, or what has taken over from it, unless Councillor Jay might know it from a Staffordshire perspective. Um, and it might just be we need to update that, to be honest. So if, if I could take that as take an that action. One on. then yes, please, if you would. Chair. Um, oh. Councillor Jay. Yeah, thank you. I was going to make a suggestion. Um, <clears throat> as you've basically inherited a work plan from a previous committee, of which, I don't know, 80% of it is now a new committee, um, maybe a, a way to uh, approach it would be to discuss as a group and pick out three or four perhaps themes and see whether these items fit into those themes so thinking about where we are we're kind of I don't know if we're class as post pandemic but we're mid to post pandemic right so things like uh, access to services so be it leisure be it GP services we were talking about yesterday um, homelessness and perhaps that initiative uh, attainment mental health you know three or four themes that we think uh, will be there now because of the pandemic and seeing if they fit in, fit into those perhaps it's just a nice suggestion of how to approach it rather than because most lots of those things on there might be things that aren't that relevant now they've been on there for two years and we're in a different world now so maybe decide on a few th themes thank you councillor jack yeah. i think there are some specific things that do come once or twice a year, aren't they? There are presentations that we have, reviews that we have at specific times, mm -hmm. and they, they would remain on here. But yeah, I'm out, let, let's open to discussion then and see what sort of two, three or four priorities we want to go along. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, just in regards to the Together We're Better, on the County Council's digest from March, uh, they've pushed it into this year. Uh, a suggestion would be to take it off ours until it reappears on theirs. So we're not getting a crossover and see what comes fr from the county side. Cheers. Thank you, Councillor Maycock. Um, have the views on that, please? Are we all happy with that? Okay. Make a note of that, please, Joe. Yep. The ones that I've noted down um, housing and allocation solutions. Um, I think that's something that's probably really important to have a look at. Um, see how we're dealing with homelessness. Um, it's open to discussion. I don't want to completely take over your meeting. I want you to be able to bring out what you, you actually want to do. Uh, well, I've been listening to all this, Chair. It just struck me perhaps that the realm of this committee is so huge that we can't actually go into everything as you've detailed, you know, in, in a lot of depth. I wonder if there'd be any scope for having two committees so that we could divide certain things, like homelessness and, and kids at school don't, don't seem to fit into the same, you know, genre, if you like. Would there be any scope for having two committees um, called, well, one could be called health and well-being, one could be called something else. Um, maybe one could be split up, you know, by age, uh, one that deals solely with young people's problems and one with with health problems for older people. All kinds of things could go into either committee. I just, just struck me that it's so huge, the realm of this committee, that we, we can't do justice to everything. That's what I was thinking. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Checks Councillor Jay. Yeah, I I agree on the the breadth of, of issues to be looked at, and that that's why I mentioned perhaps themes. So then you are limited. Well, this year we're going to look at these three themes, for example, and then if within that theme, let's say homelessness, you've got you know different categories, and it's too much for this group, that's when working groups probably are the way to to, to go. So it's it's. It's kind of like another committee, but it's working yes. groups do that work and then bring yes. it back, bring it yes. back here. Yeah. Uh, the working group just to f focus on that specific item. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Yeah, Councillor People. Uh, yes, just to support Councillor Jay's suggestion that actually I think what we do need is some themes mm. um, because, you know, we could cover a, a, a huge amount of, of information and we don't have the scope to do that. So maybe we should need we should be thinking about what are the the the, the major mm. themes um, that we could sort of take forward. I think the mental health point, um, perhaps mental well-being rather than mental health, is 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 one of the main ones because that encompasses a whole range of different things, including young people and older people, social isolation, um, vulnerability caused by. Uh, insecurity about uh, your your, prop, your your home um, and that sort of thing so I think mental health is one of the mental health and mental well-being it's one of the big ones um, and I suppose the other one the other big one for me is is um, the one that I'd suggested previously which is the sort of healthy eating food vulnerability um, and that sort of area so, so maybe thinking about some themes would be the starting point and then uh, thinking about what we want to look at in those themes. Sorry, just as an aside, um, I noted that Changes uh, Tamworth has been given the Queen's Award for Voluntary Services, um, which is, I think, the equivalent of a sort of MBE for a charity. Um, and it might be useful for this committee to have somebody from them to come in and talk to us about what they're experiencing with regard to mental health and mental well-being in Tamworth uh, because they're at the sharp end and also because they're voluntary um, they might be uh, they might find it easier to get here because I think you know we talked earlier about head teachers coming but head teachers have busy schedules and 
probably get to 6 p.m. in the evening and think I'd really rather go home and put my feet up than come to a committee, and I can't blame them for that. Um, but, you know, um, the voluntary sector works for different, different schedules, dare I say. Thank you, Councillor Peeble. Councillor Harper. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, there's a very, 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 very new person on this, uh, this committee. Um, I wonder if I can possibly ask previous um, committee members just to highlight for me, really, the greatest issues that we face. What are the biggest problems in Tamworth? Is it homelessness? Is it mental health issues? What are the biggest things we've got to get to grips with and, and get, get sorted? Um, anyone who could give me some sort of direction on that, would, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Councillor Greatrex. I, th I think, John, that um, everybody might have a different answer to that. What one person might see as a priority, somebody might not. Um, I mean, for instance, um, people working from home and suffering perhaps um, withdrawal symptoms, you know, no socialising. My own granddaughter's working from home and she hates every single second of it. She spent one day, she started her job in January, first job after uni. She, she had one day of work and that was last, last week, one day. She went to meet her colleagues and now she's back working at home and it is having a, a quite a severe effect on her. So, I mean, that's a concern to me. Um, you know, if somebody knows somebody who's homeless, that might be a concern to them. So, in a way, it's horses for courses. We could all give different answers to that. Thank you, Councillor Greatrex. The particular issue I was, I was looking at, from my point of view, um, would be homelessness, because um, if you've not got a home, if you've not got a roof over your head, mm. to me, that would be the number one priority. Um, how? How big is the problem in Tamworth? Is it a huge problem, but an insurmountable problem? I don't know. Um, it depends Council what you. Sorry, people. sorry, Chair. I'm I'm jumping in there, um, but I do have some information. Um, it depends what you talk, what you what you define as homelessness. If you're talking about street homelessness, we're talking about five to ten individuals at any one time, which is not a huge number. Um, but obviously homelessness isn't just street homelessness, it's people who are surf sofa surfing or who are temporarily staying with relatives or who, um, you know, have, have, have got some sort of arrangement but it's not satisfactory. So uh, legally you're homeless if you're in accommodation that's not, not suitable for you. So the, um, the actual extent of, of homelessness that's not street homelessness is greater than the five to ten that we see at any given time. It's still not, in terms of um, statistics, a massive number, but I think what's the biggest issue is actually the insecurity around homelessness. So it's people who are on zero hours contracts who don't know whether they're going to be, be able to pay the rent or the mortgage. It's people who are um, thinking that they may end up losing their job because of the pandemic or because of the recession or because of whatever who are going to end up with nowhere to live. So I think those, it, it, it's that that's the bigger problem. But if I may, to go back to your, your question, um, I work with a charity. The biggest issues that we see are really around, um, I think, two main things. One is mental health, and the other one is, which is related, is um, substance abuse. And that's a big problem, very big problem, I think, in the borough and, and, and nationally. So if we're talking about health, then, you know, I think those are the two main things, in my personal opinion. But that's, that's with some background uh, working for a charity that deals with people who've got different vulnerabilities. Just before I bring you in, Councillor Jai, um, we do have an update, don't we, at some point from Housing and Solution, Housing Solutions? Is the one already planned? Not yet, Chair, not no, on our work plan. Okay. No. okay. Do you think that would be something that would be useful to get somebody in from housing solutions to 
to discuss that and maybe somebody from one of the charities to give us an insight I mean I certainly when I think of homelessness I do think of somebody on the street and I certainly don't always consider all the different types of homelessness um, so if we have any suggestions on who who might be a, a suitable candidate to come and speak to us I think that would be useful there's lots of nodding going on <laughs> Um, yeah, Councillor Maycock. Thank you, Chair. Well, the, the as we spoke about earlier, that there's the homelessness and allocations policy update. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to see what the policy state is there to then get, like you say, housing solutions in and see what their thoughts are on our policy. Uh, because if the people on the <coughs> people on the ground aren't agreeing with the policy. Mm -hmm something has to give there because we're not m meeting expectations really yeah, the needs, yeah. thank you right, do we have a oh, sorry councillor jay thank you um <clears throat> yes i think uh councillor gray took us right it's a bit personal perspective sometimes you have to be careful on this committee i was on this committee before to not go down a rabbit hole about one person's issue and then you investigate and find out that actually it was just that one user that had an issue, right? Um, <clears throat> but from this conversation, I would say there's, there's two themes coming out and to prove that they're not just a one person issue, there are charities set up for those reasons, right? So we had mental well-being, which I think is the right term, not mental health, but mental well-being. And was it changes? You mentioned right so there's already a subject matter expert we could call in for that one and then homelessness and the different types of homelessness and it was heart of Tamworth right who've got initi an initiative so again there's a subject matter expert straight away so it's, to me it sounds like there's two two themes already with subject matter experts that come in and there's a the fact that they're set up in Tamworth must mean there's you there are users there's a specific need in Tamworth otherwise it wouldn't exist in Tamworth right so I think that tells us, gives us an avenue. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Councillor Michael. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, go going back onto the themes and looking at the previous work plan, there are topics there that can be tied into one another. Uh, for instance, physical well being and the Sorry, where's it gone? I'm just trying to find it. Food vulnerability and healthy eating. Uh, I think tying both of them in together uh, would be of benefit and reduce that work plan. Uh, then we've got the mental well-being, which is also encompassing to cover mental health issues in Tamworth, as well as loneliness and partnerships. Um, that could be tied in with sorry can I just sorry. jump in there chair social prescribing is one of the things that you could tie in there because that is um, the, the role of social prescribers is to help to prevent loneliness and uh, mental ill health so that's part of the, the whole programme there Thank you. I, I'm just conscious that we don't make these these items too large, that we, there won't be enough scope for us to, to deal with them, because we're not a huge committee. Um, and if we put in two or three items together, we might, well, that's my view. I don't know what anybody else thinks. Councillor Jay. M maybe, maybe two big subjects is enough to get the work plan going right mm. you know what after a year on from a pandemic people losing jobs or having money cut and stuff like that mm. what are the things that are potentially most they're most affected by one their mental well-being sick of being at home sick of not going out sick of not seeing people um maybe money worries and etc um <clears throat> not having a 
you know, fixed abode because I've lost a job, etc. And then also not having access to the right food or the money to buy that food and stuff. So, you know, they're two, they're two big, big areas there already. And maybe that's, maybe that with the items that come every six months or whatever anyway, mm -hmm. maybe you've got a, enough to, for a work plan anyway. Thank you, Councillor Jack. Councillor Michael. Yes, I'm, I'm agreed on that. Um, I was just trying to compress from the old work plan what we have spoken about today. Um, I mean, I don't know what people's feelings are. Um, with keeping them to big topics, but then trying to split smaller areas into smaller work groups that could come back to the committee, mm -hmm. not actually on a full work plan topic. And then from there, it could become a work plan topic. But again, we have to see what the issue is. There's no point putting a big topic on there, like Councillor Jay said, when you need to understand if, if it is an issue. And there's no point putting it on a work plan if there isn't. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Michael. Yeah, I, I think that we that we have got two really big big items that we could be looking at. Um, and I agree with Councillor Jay that if we have got groups set up within Tamworth to deal with these issues, items, then there's obviously a need for them, isn't there? So. Um, does anybody want to suggest who who we might get in to speak to us? The changes might be one. Can I suggest that you ask um, Community Together CIC to yeah. come in and talk about healthy eating and um, the the initiatives that they've been doing to uh, assist people to both. Um, eat more healthily and also to to cook together and eat together and reduce to social budget. isolation yes they've been doing some good work on that sorry can i just as as one i, I don't i'm not trying to depart from the the themes idea but i think we've got one fairly pressing issue which may resonate with people that's not to do with anything we've already mentioned but it's access to gps and it's been a particular issue through the pandemic um, I don't know whether anybody else has experienced this, but the GPs seem to have gone into hiding. And apologies to any GPs who listen to this and think, what? Um, but I've, we, we, we're struggling to actually get GP appointments for people uh, or even to, you know, to get hold of, of the surgery. So I don't know whether that's an issue that we need to think about, but I think it might be. people something I can take forward when I go up to county to their next meeting um, I'll provide them with feedback of what what's been said at this meeting and what we think the main issues are um, obviously the GP and access is is their responsibility it isn't our responsibility but we need to highlight the fact that we feel that there is an issue here in tamworth with it and you know what are they doing to try and t alleviate it okay. thank you i think my only point on that is now the rest of the country is starting to open up gps should start opening up that's all I've got to say on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maycock. And I don't think I'd disagree with you there either. And I don't think many of the committee would either. Councillor Grace. Yeah, I had occasion to call the doctor because um, I had an accident at home and I was quite worried. So I, I went online and they said, you can't see a doctor face to face. You, you can only get a, a telephone co um, consultation which I actually needed a doctor to look at the problem that I'd caused by having a fall. And I thought, well, that's no good. And then the very next day, I got a, a, a text to say, an appointment's been made for you. 
to go in. And so I turn up and I say, I've come to see a doctor. Oh, no, you're seeing a nurse. I'd like to know what the doctors are actually doing. I've been two or three times to see a nurse. No doctor involved at all. I'd like to know what they're doing, actually. It's easy to get a, a, an appointment with the Queen and the Pope at the same time and then get a face-to-face -face with your doctor, frankly. And, it, it, you know, it's not really good enough. It's not really good enough. That I just want to know what they're doing. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Greatrix. Anybody else on that issue? Councillor Harper. Only to say that my wife has experienced exactly the same problem. Um, first and foremost, actually getting a telephone, someone to answer the telephone, uh, and then uh, it, eventually when you do get through, um, this, this prevaricating and um, you just cannot get to see a doctor. Uh, where are they all? I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. <laughs> Councillor People. Thanks, Chair. I do, I do th I, I take Councillor Maycock's point that hopefully they will now come out of hiding. But I think it's really disappointing that um, throughout the pandemic we've been lauding the NHS and we have seen some fantastic service from nurses and doctors in hospitals and, and other staff as well. Um, but I think our experience, it seems around the room, is that the GPs have, have not really contributed to that that narrative and it's been very very difficult to get hold of of doctors and i think we're entitled to ask why um because we know that nhs staff have been risking their lives to look after us through the pandemic but that doesn't seem to have um applied to to many of the gps so um i can understand that you know everybody wants to stay safe but um, people who serve you at, at Sainsbury's um, don't have that luxury. They have to be there helping you with your groceries. And I'm not quite sure why it, it's been over the last year that, that GPs have sort of disappeared. So I think we're entitled to ask. I'm not quite sure who we ask, but I think we are entitled to ask. Thank you. Councillor Jay. I think... Um uh, Rose's suggestion was right. It's just one you and I agree, right? We're all in agreement here. So, you know, when we're at county committee meetings and they're looking at debriefing and how we can do things, plan better for next time, because there's, you know, if we're all led to believe there's going to be lots of pandemics in the future, we need to make sure that's on there. Um, <clears throat> looking at what can be learnt from it to be ready for you know, a next time. But I think that's that's a up to us to, to make, you know, make that point when we're there. Thank you, Councillor. Jo yes, I agree. Um, yeah, I've got that in big letters with a, a bubble around it, so um, so I won't forget that one. Shall we try and get onto this work plan good and proper and get it sorted out so that we know, <laughs> we know exactly where we're going? Um, so we've got two items, I believe, now. We've got homelessness... Um, and mental well-being. We have got somebody coming in, haven't we, Joe, in July to speak to us. So, um, it related to the Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust um, mm -hmm. activity that Councillor Maycock mentioned, and they're looking. There, I think they're at the start of their process to transform mental health services in the community looking at pathways into that and and would like to focus one of their focus areas I understand is in is Tamworth as well as other areas across Staffordshire this is Staffordshire wide um, and they would like to come and speak to the committee um, if that were the committee's wishes and Joe Sands has been working um, or starting, it's, it's quite new I think, quite recent, mm -hmm. starting to work with them and I think the voluntary sector is involved in this as well, which is um, part of the reason it goes to um, the Assistant Director Partnership. So I think they would be very, very um, pleased to come along to the committee and explain the process a bit better than, than I can explain it and to, to see where there are relevant areas where feedback can be sought very much locally and um, 
and fed into the broader Staffordshire picture, which I think it will become, but they do want to look locally as well. So if, if the committee were open to them coming to the July meeting, I think they, they would be very happy to do so. Councillor so. Michael? Uh, just so I totally agree with that. Um, I mean, you've had myself and uh, Joe speak about it, but uh, having uh, them in speaking about it is going to be ten times better. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we've reached a, a point where we've actually got something on the work plan. <laughs> Councillor Jane. I was going to say, um, one thing we did on corporate scrutiny, which worked well, particularly during you know being remote was we looked ahead to the next meeting like you've just done mm -hmm. that is the next one right july yep. um then kind of got the feedback from the group and then i went away as chair and worked out a work plan based on the feedback checked it through with joe to see where things could actually be ready and then brought that back to the group for agreement that might be a way if you know if you've got the themes from today mm -hmm. you sort it out the next meeting perhaps chair and vice chair look at grouping things together to see with Joe when they could be ready and then bring it back that's prob that's one way we did it and it worked it worked well just a suggestion thank you for that um, I'm open to all suggestions <laughs> kinds of people yeah I think that's a, a good suggestion um, also to say if you do want something on homelessness I'm happy to put something together because as you know I'm chair of heart of Tamworth so from the charity's point of view I can mm -hmm. tell you about what we've been doing um, but I can also put together the stats for what's happening locally so that the committee is aware if that helps. Thank you, I'm grateful for that. Um, Councillor Harper. If I may just, uh, thank you Chair, if I may just broaden this out slightly, it's um, in the very brief period that I have been a, a councillor, a matter of only a few weeks. What I've been trying to do is find out as much as I can about the particular constituency that I'm in, and um, Councillor Peoples obviously will, will know immensely more about it than I do. But in the very short time that I've been involved, um, in Bowl Hall particularly, one of the problems that has hit me is substance abuse, which it seems to me to be quite widespread. Um, one of the things I've been doing in the last couple of three weeks, I've been going out with Councillor Ken Norkey. We've been um, touring around the um, uh, the streets and he's been taking me over to the Warwickshire Moor, which is the most fantastic public open space. But it's also uh, widely used by um, groups who are abusing substances. Uh, Ken goes out every week with a couple of black bags and he clears up the rubbish that they've left. But amongst the rubbish um, there are little fires where they've been, I'm not sure what they call when they roast drugs over a fire, I don't know what it is. But that's obviously what they've been doing. And the rubbish is there from one week to the next it doesn't it's a, an ongoing thing and and Ken I can't praise him wide, uh, enough for, for what he's doing on that particular issue but um, it ties in slightly with an issue with when I was going around chatting to people during the election campaign one of the issues that I had was um, two or three people came up to me and said why are the council giving houses to drug pushers um, and this um, is n normally in well-established streets or the, the instances that I've been told about where um, long-established families have had younger people housed next to them who they say or they claim are then running drug um, markets from their, their properties which presumably are then going around onto the moor and being used um, for drug parties or whatever they happen. I don't know how to um, begin to address this problem, but I think it's a problem that ought to be looked at 
and considered at some point by this committee um, because I'm sure that Bowl Hall isn't alone in, in having this problem, that I'm sure it's a widespread problem around the town um, and should be something that, that we address at some point. What the answer is, I, I'm afraid I don't know. Thank you, Councillor Harbour. Councillor Michael. Oh, Councillor Grancheck. Thank you, Chair. I was just going to say, would that not be a problem more for the police if, if they're dealing drugs? I mean, I is that our remit? I, I would think that would be something for the police to be looking into, if, especially if, if um, Councillor Ken Norkey could point out the houses that he thinks are the ones in, in question. I think the police should deal with that. Thank you. Councillor Michael? Uh, agreeing a bit, bit with that comment. Um, I think the substance misuse would fall under the addiction under mental health, where that would fall under our committee. Um, but the actual use of the fields, I think that would be more for ISAG and the portfolio holder who deals with the police. I, d I don't think, I'm not saying it's not an issue because it, it really is, um, but. I think it, it that that instance has got to be broken down, uh, and we, as a committee, can't deal with the full picture of it. Thank you, Councillor Jai. Yeah, I was going to say I think um, it is a good point, but you, you're right that the the specific element of it is more you know p police matter, right? But the reason like mental well-being or issues of the past year, why someone would would turn to that or have more people turn to it or have Part of town, we've seen more people go down that route. You know, that that's something that could fit into those categories, right? So it's still addressing that issue, but it's more about have more turned to it this past year. Is it more of an issue, and why, and what's being done about it, rather than the specifics of that that particular uh, area? Thank you, Councillor Jai. Are we? Oh, uh, sorry, Councillor yeah. Harper. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've obviously, um, Ken and I have discussed this matter and he seems to think not all of the people who are using the moor live locally, they come from various other areas and descend on it because it's become a popular place. Um, the issue with people, um, I've spoken with the, the leader of the council about why do you give convicted drug dealers housing and he said uh, he explained to me that you have that the council has a uh, uh, mm -hmm. to actually house everyone and make sure that um, regardless of, of what they're involved in so um, it's a difficult problem to tackle um, perhaps at some point the police could help us on this and um, would it be a a good idea is to have someone from the police to explain what their role is, how they can be helped uh, in, in, in trying to come to terms with this and explain to us how how big the problem is, if it indeed it is a big problem. Thank you Councillor Harper. Uh, I, can't, I, I do agree that there's a, a massive problem with this in Tamworth and I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't people coming from around about and we're probably looking at county lines and things like that. But again, you know, the, the issue of the abuse, I think, falls into this category for health and wellbeing. But the actual issue of the, the criminality of it is a completely different thing and falls within ISTAG. I'm, that, that's how I see it. That's how, I mean, I don't know what anybody else thinks, but that's how I see it. But I've certainly put substance abuse down as one of the things that Joe and I can look at for the work plan. Um, but I think with the, the headline of mental wellbeing and health as opposed to the criminality of it, um, well, that would be my suggestion. And I know Councillor Doyle, the portfolio holder, um, who deals with those areas, that he has regular meetings with the police and it might be just worth having a word with him and 
you know, feeding it back to him so that he can take it forward with the police. Thank you, Chair. So are we in agreement then that I've got a list of things that um, I can discuss with Joe um, to bring forward to the next meeting? Um, are we, is everybody in agreement that we get the MFPT people in <laughs> um, in July to speak to us and explain the process that they're going through? Could we not use acronyms for people who don't <laughs> know what they mean? I think we've said this one, haven't we? The Mid Midlands Partnership, Partnership <laughs> Foundation Trust. Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust. Um, and I find that quite a mouthful. And I can't even get the acronyms right <laughs> either. So, um, so yeah, so if we're, we're all happy for me to do that and meet with Joe um, and also try and meet with um, Simon to have a look where we can, you know, sort of double heads a couple of things. Um, has anybody else got anything they want to move? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, with your permission, I'd like to start a working group and I'd just like to discuss with the committee what, what that would be about. Um, some of you may know I used to be in the, uh, in the forces and, sin and the Borough Council signed on to the Armed Forces Covenant in 2015 uh, and I think that that could be reviewed uh, and I'd just like to start a little working group to see where the council is at the moment and um, see what efforts there are to be made to bring the information and policies up to date if they are found to be lacking. Now, one of the main topics tonight has been mental well-being and uh, Councillor Peoples said earlier that if somebody hasn't got a roof over their head, then their mental health is going to suffer, their mental well-being is going to suffer. Now, that is where I think the Armed Forces Covenant and this the working group that I'd wish to start could fall into it look, looking at it holistically, because it's, it's not just about the substance abuse or the lack of a house, or the breakdown of a relationship. It's all of it. And that's where the Armed Forces Covenant comes in to support the forces communities to integrate into the communities that they're going to integrate into. So I left the military and I came to Tamworth. A uh, couple of issues that I had to come to the council with. Uh, this was before the Armed Forces Covenant. Uh, and it, it was a bit of a task um, so I believe that anything that could be done to bring the borough up to date with the Covenant would only be of benefit I, d I don't know what anybody else thinks of that thank you thank you Councillor Maycock um, again I think it might be a, a good idea if we got um, Joe Sands I think he's person who yeah who the director who deals with this um if we got her in just to let us know exactly what they are doing to comply with the covenant at the moment and then after we've done that perhaps form the working group so that we can set some parameters as to what they specifically want to look at does that work Yes, nods. Yes, we're getting some nods. <laughs> um, does anybody else want to talk on that issue? Okay. So, unless anybody else wants to discuss anything else or bring up any other points that they might want me to put on my big list here, um, I think that's it for this evening so thank you all for your attendance it's now I make it 20 past 7 so I now close this meeting and thank you all for attending and thank you for anybody who's watched online
Thank you. Good evening.